01603 617 321. Now, uh, something we've talked a lot about on this programme uh, over uh, the, the past few months and probably years is that the state of the ambulance service in Norfolk. But did you know it relies heavily on the work of volunteers? The Norfolk Accident Rescue Service is made up of workers in the service who give up their spare time to be on call when needed. So Wally is in the forum in Norwich where the charity is holding an open day to explain how it all works. Hi, Wally. Hi. Yes, Chris, it's all part of uh, by local Norfolk, actually, and this is one aspect of it, the Norfolk Accident Rescue Service. And you think to yourself, you know, that they've got to have professional people to operate this system, and those people are under enough pressure in, in their normal working lives. So let's talk to Chris Neal and Dr Drew Welch, who've joined me here this morning. Uh, just very briefly, NARS, as it's known, uh, Chris, just tell us a little bit more about its work. So this is a, an organisation that has been about for the last 40 years and used to consist of mainly GPs that would respond from their surgery to help the ambulance service with uh, serious road traffic accidents, etc. And as times moved on, times have changed and paramedic training has improved, so have we. So we now rely on some GPs and mainly hospital doctors and senior paramedics that are trained in critical care. And, and we, we spend a lot of our, t our spare time helping the ambulance service will volunteer from home to still go to some of these serious car crashes and also some sick medical patients, so cardiac arrests, uh, patients that are septic and, and patient groups like that, we, we feel that our skills can certainly help the ambulance service. Talk a little bit more about uh, what happens uh, you know, when you go out to an emergency in a moment. Let's just ask Dr Welch really, what, what makes you do this? Um, I don't know. I think I've been interested in it for, for a number of years and uh, I think being able to um, offer something else to the patient, um, you know, we don't necessarily say saving lives all the time, it's just sometimes it's just a matter of making them a bit more comfortable or improving the level of care that they get um, and, and that's that's where it, my interest lies really. I think. And, and it's volunteering that you're quite qualified to do as well, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, Can I um, ask you though, let's talk a little bit about the Easter Anglian Ambulance Service because we, we've heard in the news so often you have, you've been watching the stories it's, it's had its difficulties and that how do you dovetail into that and, and what, what effect do you have on that service? Uh, well, I think the positive thing that's come about in the last uh, year or so with the Ambulance Service and us is that uh, they've created a, a critical care desk which is a designated person in the ambulance control room looking at every single 999 call that comes into the East of England Ambulance Service every day uh, every call is looked at um, by a designated um, call taker and if it meets the dispatch criteria, uh, which is a predefined um, number of calls or types of calls like traffic accidents, stab, gunshot, cardiac arrest, paediatric uh, emergencies, then if it's a particular a suitable job, then they'll dispatch one of us. Um, so, you, so you're not just a cheap top-up for the service? Uh, not at all, no. Um, they always dis uh, dispatch an ambulance. Uh, we're not there to hit times, targets or anything like that. It's, it's completely different. And um, this uh, critical care desk service um, is set to continue for the foreseeable future. And Chris, let's come back to a situation. You're called out to an emergency. You, you get a call, you rush out there. Um, isn't it the case that very often the paramedics have already arrived? They are. They're very often on scene. Um, and all we do is, paramedics are extremely well trained, all we do is we add that bit of extra on top. So in terms of uh, pharmacology, we, you know, we can carry stronger pain relieving drugs for sedation and, and on also... Um, um, we, we've, we, we've done a lot more training, so critical care paramedic has gone back to university, done a master's degree, etc., and spent a lot of time in hospital working with hospital doctors. So, so it's just bringing a little bit more of ITU and A&E to the roadside. That's what we add. And you're getting the message across here in the forum today? We'd like to, you see, because we're, we're, we're a charity, we're voluntary, um, the current climate makes things difficult, difficult for us, so it's raising our profile, really, trying to raise some funds, because what we want to do in the near future is, is get a car so we can actually provide more hours of cover. So instead of just responding from home, we can actually have a car that's all suited and booted with blue lights on, and we can provide more, more, of a, more cover, more shift cover, really. That's, that's our ultimate aim within the next 12 months. So we need to raise funds for that. Have a good day today. I know the last time that you and I met was at Christmas time when we were dishing out chocolates to people and you were at the air ambulance at that time. That's right. I mean, my, my normal job in the ambulance service is to fly on the air ambulance and, you know, I thoroughly enjoy that. And, and when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm off work, then I'll voluntarily respond for NARS. That's how I, how I do things. You and I might be meeting again quite soon. Thank you very much.
It's 8.32, the BBC Radio Norfolk headlines now with Nikki Price. Voluntary paramedics will be out in Norfolk today showing the public what they do. Critical care paramedics will be outside the Forum in Norwich with a rapid response vehicle and lots of equipment for people to see.